awesome to work in a place like that. And our verse for this year is, nothing is impossible with God. So Amen. we'll get through it. Um, I'm just, you know, not like excited. <laughs> you, you made the remark of working in school, but you're working in a Christian school which is a totally different, uh, totally different experience. It has that potential. Good for you. Yeah, no, um, very first thing I said um, to my students, not, well, my name, and then I said, uh, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. And that's the most important thing in my life. And, Amen. You know, you can't just go in any place and say that. So. That is correct, absolutely. Because, because Nor can you live it out in right. New Daily. Wonderful. And it will be a blessing to be the principal for the day. <laughs> Six hours. Six hours. <laughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Mr. Bob. Very good. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. Any others? Donna. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. So I have some that were uh, brought to me. Um, prayers for the family of Evelyn Wentworth, who passed this last week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And for the family of Anna Jane Sager, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And also prayers for uh, Pastor Don Farrell. Don had a stroke ice a significant period ago, maybe a month, six weeks, something like that, I think, and is... Uh, I, I understand not doing well, so Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And also we want to pray for Donna Fisher, who will be having a procedure in Springfield tomorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. All right. Um, would you please join with me? In the prayer that Christ Jesus himself taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I would like to add one more that I had written down and I just didn't look at. We really need to pray for our schools, for our school children, for teachers and faculty, for staff people. Um, COVID. You know, under, under ideal circumstances, it's a challenge getting all the ducks in a row and moving into a new school year. But after COVID of last year and what, uh, what seems to be a part of our future has to be a real challenge for all people, whether you're a parent, a child, a employee, a, a teacher or administrator, I can't imagine. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayers. Holy God, you have the words of eternal life. By your Holy Spirit, let your words pierce our darkness, strengthen our faith, and illumine our witness for you. Amen. And Please join together in our hymn number 352, Standing in the Need of Prayer. <coughs> it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the 
the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the preacher, not the deacon, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the preacher, not the deacon, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. All right. So did you get that message? It's me, standing in the need of prayer. And when I read this scripture reading to you this morning, you'll understand why. How's that? Our scripture reading this morning is from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that day, and having done everything to stand firm, Standing be therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness as shoes for your feet put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Wow! What do you think of that scripture this morning? Huh? What a challenge Paul was facing. You know, he, uh, he claimed that he was an ambassador in chains because he was in prison when he wrote this to the people at Ephesus encouraging them. I'm guessing that the world that they were facing was a pretty difficult and challenging dark world. Right? You know, they were outsiders. They were followers of Jesus and his ways taught them to live differently than that world out there, the world we would call the secular world. What a challenge. Stay strong. 
These are the things that you will need so that you can stay strong in your faith and not succumb. You don't see this uh, militaristic kind of imagery painted in the, especially in the New Testament, rarely. But maybe, maybe it's appropriate that it is, you know? First of all, let's keep one thing in mind, and that is that all of these images, these militaristic, the shield, the helmet, all of that was primarily a defensive tools to protect the self, not to be the aggressor, but to protect the believer. Do you guys need any protection from the world out there as you journey along in your faith? What do you think? Is the world all harmonious and loving us Christians? No. You know, many years ago, I would never have thought that. And I think, I think all of us, probably every single one of us in this room, with the exception of Angela, was born at a time that we would have called Christendom. It was a time when people belonged to the church. That was a, it, it was a significant root in our culture. The church had a place. Do you remember a time when they didn't serve alcohol on Sunday afternoons? Or, you know, there were rules and they, there were rules that came out of the church. You know, the church had made an impact. Do you find that the case today? Probably not, right? A guy named Stanley Hauerwas said that Christendom, which was the influence of this, this Period, a very long historic period where the church played a very significant part in the rules of the culture, how the culture functioned. Christendom, he said, came to an end when Kmart started staying open on Sundays in South Carolina. You know, one of those red, very fundamentalist Christian states when, when they started selling all kinds of things because no longer did it make a difference. And there were times in the week, even uh, up until probably 20 years ago, when Wednesday night was church night, right? Do you remember that? Wednesday night was church night, and you wouldn't think to have other major events happen on, on a uh, Sunday morning, because Sunday morning was that sacred time for church, right? Doesn't work that way anymore, does it? I wonder how many traveling, uh, what would we have now? We're football, would we have? Anyway, there are all kinds of sports events that happen on Sunday morning, and it's really hard to get kids to come together because they are doing other things, they are doing sports. And let's, uh, let's not think of the struggle that you have just with the parents who are both working, and those two days called Saturday and Sunday, the weekend, make it very difficult to get all of their responsibilities taken care of. You know, the world that we lived in is different than today. And uh, I think we probably all agree it's not necessarily better for having made that change. Although, let's be honest, that world that we came from way back there wasn't perfect either. So, and the church was not perfect in it. Anyway. So, do we need this protection, this put on the full armor of God? What are those practices, those spiritual disciplines or practices that help us to stay connected with our faith and rooted in our faith so that when we walk out that door out there, we just don't kind of blend into the culture around us, but that we take our faith with us? I appreciated a great deal what Pam shared about teaching in a different kind of an environment. You know, I was reading one story where there was a group of teachers that got together once a week to pray for each other so that, so that they could continue to live out their Christian faith in the environment of a public school setting so that because it's a challenge. The world that we live in out there does not reflect 
the teachings that Jesus has given to us as his followers. What are some of those teachings? You know, that we should love everyone, especially those who are on the margins of society. Children of poverty, you know, children of color. We are such a conflicted nation in so many ways. We are all, all of us, created in the image of God, no matter what the color of our skin or the language we speak or the way we vote, you know? I think that was some of the teachings that we received early in life was how to respect others, how to care. I, I find, uh, I don't wanna chase down political rabbits here. One of the issues that strikes me Let's see. I don't know where you are with being vaccinated. I'm assuming almost everyone here has been vaccinated. I'm assuming that, and it's okay if you're not. But what I hear the argument against vaccination is generally, it's my personal freedom and by gosh, I'm going to cling to it. Am I right? You know? Jesus taught us about Others are created in the image of God also. Where I'm headed is just this. There's a difference between me and we. It seems like one of the blessings of getting a vaccination is not just the protection that we personally receive, it's also the protection that we don't share this thing with others. So there's a sense of responsibility to other mortals also. And when you take the position that it's just about me and my freedoms, you are saying basically to heck with everybody else or something like that. I know it's more complicated than that. I'm, I'm, one of the things that goes back to Hauerwas when he says, Christendom ended when we started selling, when, be, when it became important to sell no matter what, no matter when, okay? Another person that I respect said, you know, Christendom take, uh, Christianity took a real blow when we became a consumer culture. What is there about being a consumer culture that rubs against our Christian faith? Every one of those commercials that you watch on television is telling you one thing. You are the most important person in the whole entire world. And when you wear our t-shirt, our underwear, our makeup, our whatever, you're gonna look so much more beautiful than you do before, you know, because you deserve it. You know, when I hear, when I see more and more of these commercials that tell you how you deserve it, I wanna gag. Because they're feeding your ego so they can sell their product and make money. That's all that's about. Christ Jesus has taught us something different. Christ Jesus has taught us about sacrificial love, of caring for others, of giving of ourselves to others. And in the process, receiving the blessing, the spiritual blessing of knowing that you are loved and cared for by a power greater than yourself. And that love changes our lives. I stumbled across the, I didn't stumble across it. It's here. Right now I'm stumbling across it. <laughs> uh, there's some statistics here that are, here we go. No. I want, I, oh, phooey. The statistics of where we have come from as a culture, uh, as, a, as Christians, is almost frightening. Back in the, uh, here we go. Back in 1955, 
95% of Americans identified as Christians. That's you and I, friends. That's our, that's, that's our, the youth, the formative parts of our lives. 95% of Americans identified as Christians. My uncle Bill was the senior directing pastor at what was then First Methodist Church in Decatur. He had 4,000 members, he told me. Members. And you remember I've talked at other times, there's a difference between being a member and being a disciple or a follower of Jesus. There's a, he had members, 4,000 members. So there were surveys taken between 2014 and 2017. That's only six years ago, more or less. Short period of time. The number had shrunk to 69%. That's basically not quite a, a fourth fewer. The number of people marking other grew from 4% to 11. Those marking none grew from 1% to 20%. The nuns are now the fastest growing religious demographic in America, surpassing evangelicals 23.1 to 22.5% and mainline Protestants at 11.8%. In addition, 10% of uh, the American population falls under the category of churchless Christians. Boy, that seems like a, as people who have dropped out for a variety of reasons. There's another similar category that I remember from seminary called the de-churched. Those are people who were active in church that followed their faith and for one reason or another dropped out, oftentimes because of the things that they had seen happen you know, the, the clergy issues that happened with, uh, especially in the Catholic Church, with uh, homosexuality and, and child abuse, pedophilia, the uh, sexual issues that clergy, uh, Protestant clergy have. There are a whole bunch of things uh, that have just driven people from the church. The institutional church. There is a group called spiritual but not religious. There's a reason we're where we are. A lot of it has to do with out there. But there are those issues within, within the, the institution of the church. So Paul gives us, first of all, he is he is unflinching in sharing the power and the gospel, the blessing of knowing Christ Jesus as Lord. You know? But he tells us to be cautious of what happens out there. That what are the, the cosmic powers of this present darkness? You know? And if we really sit and think, it doesn't hard to see challenges out there against our faith, something that we have to work against. Anyway, I got a story I'll tell. And this was, uh, this was uh, Willimon's, one of Willimon's experiences that he shared. He said, I was speaking out in Texas and in the discussion period after my sermon, the host pastor said, you seem to have such a negative view of the world. I believe that the world is a place of God's love, that there is much that we have to learn from science, culture, and those outside the church. I suggested that he leave his church burglar alarm off that night and let's see how great the world really was. And on my way through the parking lot that night, um, I encountered a little, a little, a little group of, a small group of women in animated conversation. We're talking about you, one of the women said. We wonder if you preachers know what we're up against in the schools. Like what, I said. Like a sixth grader who has been abandoned by her parents, both of whom are physicians in the city, one said. Like an eight-year-old who is addicted to cocaine, said another. 
On and on they went. Well, your preacher believes this is a great town, I said. Of course he does. They replied, he's never visited one of our middle schools. I think that lay people ought to bring their discipleship dilemmas to church, I told them. They ought to force us preachers to confront what they may deal with in the real world. Shortly thereafter, I visited another church where a group of public school teachers met once a week for prayer breakfast, where they prayed together for the strength to be public school teachers and Christians at the same time. Where are we? Are we preachers uh, isolated? It's easy to be isolated. It's easy to be isolated. People like to share good stories with the preacher, you know? Um, I hope I'm one that has an ear of integrity that people can share their stories. But I'm kind of, how do we, as the body of Christ, known as the Bridge Church Fellowship, how do we connect with the people in our community? Well, most of you folks live here in this community. I don't, and that's, that's, not, that's not helpful in this, what we're talking about right now. The fact that I don't live close by. But how can I, how can we become tuned in to the real issues that people here in Argenta, Oriana, Cisco, Weldon are dealing with? So that we can be, so that we can bring our faith and share it the blessing that we have received through knowing Christ Jesus as Lord. We come from a mainline background and I'm gonna guess almost everyone here, the thought of sharing our idea sounds like evangelism. I gotta go tell them what to believe. And we probably all get real anxious about that. But let me tell you, you can share your story of what God has done in your life, the blessing you have received. That is not controversial. We're here because somehow the Lord of life touched our soul. And that's why we came. That's why we come Sunday after Sunday. Maybe we come to get some sense of renewal, some strength of dealing with that out there, some clarity. Touch the, touch home base, I don't know. But I sure hope we can begin to have some conversation about how we hear our neighbors and begin to hear the issues that they, they are struggling with. That's fascinating, isn't it? All the, all the weapons put on the full armor of God. Amen. Pam, it was interesting you talking about uh, one student that came with a knife, you know. The issues are there. Yeah. It, and it's the devil. It's it is. What, however we understand that, yes, it is that yeah. darkness of spirit. I mean, in a place where we're trying to do the right thing, he's sneaking in, and that's where we gotta yeah. keep on. Our and I, I would say, Pam, Share with us those stories so that we can pray. You may be in one of the best positions to actually engage that younger generation to see what the struggles are. And maybe we can be people that can pray for that and open our eyes to what's going on around us because what happens there is clearly going on in other schools and in other contexts, you know? Thank you, Pam. My friends, would you...
Please join with me in our closing hymn, which is Blessed Assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight, angels descending bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of God's power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand firm as you boldly proclaim the gospel of peace in word and in deed. May the living God bring you strength. Lord Jesus Christ feeds you with his flesh and blood. The Holy Spirit fills you with life. You are blessed by the Holy Trinity. Go in peace, my friends. Go in peace. Amen.